One of the main problems with the original Game Boy Advance was always the screen. For those that remember, the console never had a backlight, so when you come to play a Game Boy Advance in today's age, it's pretty much unplayable because there's no backlight. Over the last few years, as many companies like Funny Plane and Generic Brands, as well as a few others like Ben Ven and McWill, that have made screens for most of the retro consoles, including our own for the Game Gear, which we've done the clean screen for, but today's a little bit more special. I've made the clean screen for the Game Boy Advanced, but this time a heavy focus on using the original shell, the original screen, no cuts, no soldering, zero work whatsoever except a screwdriver to open the console up. You can obviously install these in our shells and install new glass lenses, which will be the original size as well. You don't need the IPS size windows anymore. And you can add a ribbon cable or wires to bring an on-screen menu up and do much more. But if you don't want to faff with any of that and you simply want to take a Game Boy Advanced and drop in a nice modern screen with no specialist tools required, that is the main focus what I've done with this Game Boy Advance clean screen. So you can see all we need is the TFT, our actual TFT we've had made, the clean screen board itself and a ribbon either 40 pin or 32 pin depending on the console. It takes about 5 minutes to install, it literally drops in and you screw it back together. You'll have the exact same original size as the original Game Boy. You'll have the same pixel size exactly. You'll have a nice brightness level. And the colours, most importantly, that no other screen on the market get right, not even close. The actual colours match the original colours of the Game Boy Advanced accurately. So there's many benefits to this, and I'll go over it in more of an in-depth video. But for now, let's just jump in and show you how to install this Game Boy Advance clean screen in about 5-10 to 10 minutes. So we've got an original Game Boy Advance here, uh, it's pretty beat up, there's no triggers, bumpers, it's just a console ready for some good restoration. So the first thing to do is look behind the battery cover inside here for the board, and I believe if it has a 1 here, so a 0, 1 or a 1, 0, I believe that is an indication that it's a 40 pin board and other numbers are 32 pin. But the safest bet is either look through the shell to see the ribbon here, and you kind of know the size, or just open the console up. So your safest bet is just get a screwdriver which you will need a uh, tri-wing tip, which we sell on our store. We sell uh, screwdriver kits that come with every possible, you know, tip you could need for modding consoles. You take out tri-wings in all these positions and you remove a Phillips screw from here. So you just remove the back and then you can see in here, this is a 40 pin, it says up here. So this will say 40 or 32 pin here, right by the connector. You want to remove the Phillips screw that's here, and sometimes one here, not always, and there's a Phillips here. So there's three screws in the center holding the PCB down. Once you've got those three out, get these two tabs, push them gently, and then either with your fingers, or if you have a set of tweezers, just gently put your tweezers in and flick the ribbon out. Then remove the board and set the board aside now to get the screen out the easiest way you find is just a gentle twist left and right and it sort of breaks the adhesion and there you go you can hear it's clicked off there once you get a click off just twist it and then grab the screen and then you can lift out you can see the adhesive strip comes with it that's fine you can reinstall this or leave it out, it doesn't really matter too much. We sell replacement dust gaskets uh, that are single-sided sticky. We don't recommend putting a new screen in when the top is also sticky because it makes repair much harder. So there's the original screen. We'll come back to this to compare in a moment. But that's it, the shell's now ready for the clean screen. So we've got the TFT here. This is our clean screen TFT, which we have made ourselves. That's taken over a year to produce this screen. It's got a protective film on, so just peel this off. And you can see already the screen has a lovely matte finish. This means it doesn't reflect as much light and gives much better colour reproduction when we come to play the games, which you'll see. It's got a protective strip here to help with tearing, which is common on many other screen kits. You'll rip ribbons all the time. 
we've actually embedded a reinforcement strip here, right where the delicate part of the screen is. With that aside, let's see how easy this is to install. Get the screen, and we will actually, just before placing it in, I'm just going to pop this original screen out, which you can leave in. Well, I'm just going to drop this one back in after and show it with an optional replacement glass lens as well, just so you can see, you know, the screen nice and clear because this one is quite scratched. Remove the start and select rubber first, just because that will get in the way of the ribbon here. Place the screen in the gap there, push down, and there's your screen installed. Now you take the clean screen driver board, make sure this latch is flipped up. So you can see that's flipped down, that's flipped up. With it flipped up, insert the ribbon into the connector and it will push in about that far. So you'll see the black reinforcement strip lines up with the edge of the board. Click that down. Once this is in, this isn't going anywhere, this is in the console. So there's no need to do anything, it literally sits perfectly in the console. Put the start and select rubber back in, put the power button, slider back in. And then finally, because this board is a 40 pin, I have grabbed a 40 pin ribbon. You want to do the same here, lift up the latch, insert the 40 pin ribbon where it says clean screen, so black side up, and again, latch down. Now I will show this install in one of our shells with the on-screen menu and the button ribbon soldered, but this is purely the drop-in no solder install. So there's no need to do anything else now. That's the kit installed. So it's as simple now as taking the Game Boy Advance PCB, dropping it back, and secondly, just make sure your power button is lined up with the power switch so that that fits in right. Once that's in, screw your Phillips screws back into the circuit board. And now we'll connect this ribbon back up. So you fold the ribbon over. And as it slides in like that, we just push down the little latches to the left and right. And there we have it. You can see the board here. You don't really need to do anything. It's happy just sitting there. It's fairly secure. It's not going to go anywhere. If you really want, you could maybe apply a little bit of Kapton tape here to hold the board, but there really isn't any need to do anything with it. And then we'll chuck the back on. I'll just put two screws in just to hold the back in place. And you'll also see how easy it is, compared to the other screens also, to clean any marks off. So you can see I've got fingerprints on this as I was assembling, but look at that. Completely clean, without any kind of major work. And dust comes off the screen really, really easy. So part of having this finish on the screen means that it's much, much easier to clean. And that's it. That's the clean screen installed. Let's just chuck some AA batteries in and turn on. And you can see there, the clean screen has a very similar appearance to the original screen. So it has a pixel grid, it has colors that match. Importantly, if we take the original lens, it fits absolutely perfectly with the original lens. And if you want to take one of our lenses, we do debranded lenses, we do reproductions of the original, whichever you like. So a complete drop-in replacement solution. Now I will do a features video in much more depth, but for now, let me just quickly show you, say, Golden Sun, for example. Pay attention to the color of the Camelot logo, for example. So you can see that is the correct color. The color of the greens is correct. And if we just go into the game,
You can see the greens as well are green and not over yellow. The floor inside here is usually very green on every other IPS screen, including Funny Plane. These colors are miles off. So having the accurate color and the accurate visual and the original size screen is a real key benefit for those that want their consoles as original as possible. So this is an original shell, nothing done to it, no soldering, nothing that can't be reversed, yet a modern screen that lasts a long while on battery and other than being backlit would visually represent the original screen perfectly with no glitches that are common in all of the other current screens on the market. I'll go over the comparisons and the features of why this is such a good screen to have in another video but hopefully you can see already the benefits of such an easy install for those that don't do soldering this is a must-have and for those purists that want to keep everything as original as possible this is again a real step forward i feel in the final solution to a screen for the game Boy advanced i'll just quickly show you f0 just to show you one other benefit that again nothing else on the market has and that is the ability to support true transparency just like the original screen even emulators on your computer have an issue where the games for the Game Boy Advance and many other consoles used to intermittently flicker graphics on and off to create a transparency. And you can see the map here that's actually see-through. So you can see this transparency and you can see the map underneath the level. So this mode is what we call true motion and it's because it allows for original transparency support how the games appeared on the original screen if you check this game out on any other screen or emulators you'll find this map flickers on and off every other frame which is really annoying and distracting so i spent a lot of time making sure this true motion works perfectly and true to original Here's another game where this entire dialogue would be flickering rapidly and completely distracting. And again, we've got actual transparency support and you can see the map underneath the dialogue. But that's it for this one. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to install in an original shell. And next up, I'll show you how to install this in one of our shells, including adding support for the on-screen menu to allow you to move the position of the screen, change the brightness, change the color modes and much more. As always, any comments and feedback, anything you want to see in the future, or anything you do and don't like about this screen, hit me up in the comments. I always listen and I always implement any changes that people have, so we can make the best products on the market for you guys to enjoy. I've spent well over a year making this project. It's been the longest running project I've done so far for Retro 6, and I really hope you guys appreciate this one, and I look forward to doing many more of this one as a success and you guys enjoy it. So happy modding guys and I'll catch you in the next one.